dance. Good to see you. Uh, <laughs> So what's, what's on your mind these days, my friend? We were just talking about the cruise as we began this. So, uh, hey, we were. We were. Uh, just wanted to kind of go say, uh, yes, Dr. Sean Cruz, and uh, he was here in the studio. He did a fantastic job sort of explaining to the rest of us about quantum physics and how the sun works. Mm. Things like that. It's mm. not a ball of fire. Mm. And he's uh, he, he has his love of Tiny Tim. I think he is no, probably one of the... I remember that part. He, he is a, uh, a real fan, a super fan of Tiny Tim. I don't know if you realize this, but he I has a not. ukulele signed by Tiny Tim. He does? Okay. Yes. Uh, well, he may have. And but people I don't, don't realize this, but Tiny Tim also had um, a problem with, um, with uh, wetting himself. He had bladder control. Okay. Uh, okay. Sean has a, a oh, diaper. Oh, Sean, are you just trying to say or implying <laughs> yes, that... Uh, he has a signed Tiny Tim diaper. <laughs> this is not good because... No, no, it's if good. If this it's goes good. out, I mean, Sean's going to hear this and... Uh, no, no, he's a super fan. I think this is good. For some reason, I'm the one that gets in trouble about all this. You can say anything, but, uh, but uh, I'm the one that takes the hit. So uh, our apologies uh, to Sean right at the start here. Um, love this guy. Actually, he is the best, uh, and uh, I'm so glad he's coming in the studio. He's going to keep I'll coming tell you what, in the studio. We're going to have His presence here actually overshadowed, because I don't know if you realize this, but uh, we, lock, we lost Rick Okasik. Yes. Yeah. Um, mm. a, as a matter of fact, Jeff and I were talking about that, uh, and a couple of uh, other friends of mine. It, I mean, it had an impact on, mm. and also Eddie Money. If you remember, there you go. Um, uh, and that happened. He cashed so. in one of those tickets to Paradise, is what I hear. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he finally cashed in that <laughs> ticket. All right, that's uh, that's nice. So um, mm. that 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 makes a difference. I mean, um, this week also, um, Ke, uh, uh, Kim Burns says is. Um, a series on country music. It is just started true. a documentary. Yes. And yes. I think they've played like. It's uh, funny. Eight I just uh, so uh, I, I listened to just like ten or fifteen minutes of that, and suddenly I was attracted to my sister. What's that about? Okay, all right. <laughs> See, I don't know. I don't know how we get like that turned so quickly. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep uh, having to respond. <laughs> Evidently, that somehow that's become my job. Um, I'm not sure if I signed up for that, but. Uh, actually, it was a great documentary. Uh, the last half of it starts this Sunday on mm -hmm. our Georgia public television stations here, and um, it was really interesting. But the point I was going to make about mm -hmm. that was that... Rick Ocasek did country music? Is that what we're going No, I mean, we're not going down that road. <laughs> what I was going to say is that a lot of stars, even rock stars, but also country stars, died at an early age. Hank Williams at 29 there years of go. age. Yes. Um, uh, Patsy Cline, of course, in a, a, a plane accident and some of the others. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, mm -hmm. it was an interesting topic. I was just fascinated about why it had such an impact with this with Ocasek and um, Eddie Money this week. Well, I, I'm, I, and I, I can't, I don't want to speak ill of Eddie Money, but I suspect yeah. Ocasek's uh, passing probably cast a larger shadow. I think so. But, I would uh, think so, yes. I, I think Ocasek is, uh, was interesting because um, I, I really didn't think much about the cars. But there've been all these retrospectives and whatnot, and they, they, they had a lot of songs that made it on the radio. And I kept of thinking, course. these things were soundtracks to my existence in lots of ways. And right. and um, you can think about it. It's that one of the one of the radio guys was talking about this. We're losing the 20th century. So all, all right. these folks are beginning to fade. Lou Reed, uh, we can begin to, and they're all starting to die. This is, you know. Yeah, there's a, there's a, it's a change that affects us all. And we, I, I, that's a good point that you made, the idea that we're not really sure just how much impact in our life and sort of that mm -hmm. background that's always mm -hmm. going and we accept it. Mm -hmm. The idea, too, that, that the music from the, the 60s and, and 70s and so forth um, are still ar around. They're, they're at the uh, shopping malls, they're at the grocery mm -hmm. store, they're, they're, they're different things. They're ubiquitous, as it were. As a, and I know that's a a ploy to get you to stay in the store longer and buy more merch but um mm. i'm i'm just uh I'm, i'll I'm tell you what about that uh whenever i'm in uh, walmart and they're cranking up that bad company song feel like making love <laughs> i buy a lot of you know s school supplies and cat food it's <laughs> like you know <laughs> but um bum yeah. but um bump and suddenly i'm like you know i've got more items in my cart okay i think that is actually <laughs> true and there's probably some um psychology experiments we can pull to say that as yeah, an that's aside, why they're doing that. Exactly. Th th this is a true story. There was a uh, one of the um, uh, one of the ice cream trucks. It cruises around. Uh, I used cruise again. Uh, yeah, I, know, I love it. I love it. I, uh, well, I love when a plan comes together. <laughs> the 
Yes. <laughs> but, uh, it, you know, and it's cruising around the um, lake bottom. You know, they, they have the songs they play. Right. Right. You know, usually it's like that pop goes the weasel. Pop goes the weasel. It's, it's very ch- childlike. They were playing that early. Bad Company song, Feel Like Making Love. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, I just didn't, I didn't know what to do. That's not for the ice cream truck. Okay. Um, I didn't know what that, you know. I don't, I don't know, but um, it and, seems to be a favorite of yours for some reason. But. And when you talk about, uh, you know, like us losing... Like so many, so many folks have died for sixties have died. You know, but there, there's going to be some major ones. I, I think when Jim Morrison dies, man, that's really okay. Let me. Really um, I'm sorry to um, break the news to you. Uh, but Was that yes, uh, uh, you can visit his grave? Uh, so. No, no way, no yes, way. Yes, absolutely. To Jim Morrison, I thought you. That guy was. You could look at that guy. He was a picture of health. How well, did he? How did he uh, I I'm, I I think the big breakthrough will be when Keith Richards dies because evidently he can't uh, die. He, he actually has point, died maybe. several times. <laughs> Let's be honest, that guy is. <laughs> he's uh, whatever you can uh, do to your body, he's done it a couple of three times. I think so, it's, uh, 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 somebody was telling me that he, on at least more than once he's had a complete blood transfusion. That they literally is that true? It's true. That literally, oh I'm not goodness. making that up. Oh yeah. Oh, and he, he had a concussion crazy. from falling out of a coconut tree. I don't know if that was that long ago. That was like about ten years ago. He. What was he doing in a coconut tree? But I, uh, that's another. That's another I'm story not, altogether. I'm not sure what. I had a, a a a friend in graduate school who was a huge, huge Stones fan, and always tell me stories about you know yeah. Keith and his his exploits. Yeah. And um, and he's a, a fabulous musician. He knows history of music. I mean the guy is uh, still smart and talented and moving mm-hmm. and going pretty at a pretty good clip. Well, I said, if you've ever watched a, a live Stone show, he plays like like nine notes the whole show. Cause right. It's, it's not a... Well, that, I mean, that may be all he needs. Uh, I mean, it is. It may, I'm sure it is. But like, if you look, you look everybody that. else is playing, and he's occasionally, you know, doing like a riff and then stopping for about five minutes, and he does it again. I mean, that guy, that guy is... <laughs> and yeah. he's making money, so there we go. I'm making lots of money. Which, by the way, I think the um, um, Metallica now has the um, they've made the most um, of a uh, of a tour. I think they made one point something billion they hit for a, for a tour. So that they they now wow. officially have made the most of any touring act. I think. Yeah, it's, uh, that's a that's a interesting to kind of look at what uh, how much money you can make now as opposed to the days uh, before. Uh, making a reference back to the country music days when uh so um listen man uh what's on your mind uh today well, i mean what is our topic we're going to help well some I, folks i'll be honest i keep thinking about tiny tim so okay. but that's See, obviously not what we need to no, uh, that, that, talk about so. but it, uh, it sounds like it sounds to me like you may know more than you actually know but i don't know if that's about, true or not well, about actually, Tiny Tim. About yeah. a lot of, and this, I think this is an attempt to lure us into our uh, our topic today. Uh, it's, it's called a is, segue, and uh, yeah. evidently that wasn't a very good one, but uh, I tried well, anyway. Speaking of segues, those things didn't take off. They okay, were supposed to, but they, they were not. You know, that the inventor of, of that and owner of the country went off a cliff uh, really? on a segue and, and died. No way, that, did that really happen? That, that's a true story. Look that, that one is, up. Yeah, he did. He went off so, that. Well, that would, you know, I have... Uh, <laughs> doesn't say much for the product, though. Uh, but well, it was supposed to be the next big thing, you know. We were supposed to, instead of jetpacks, we got that. So, um, uh, no, it didn't work out. <laughs> we, we didn't get get jetpacks. So we, we're thinking about what we're talking about today. We're talking about the um, those uh, Keurigs, those um, those really <laughs> no, cool I, that Swedish. Was my, that was my that was my joke to you, uh, or, or attempt at a joke uh, to you about our topic today. Uh, yeah, it's the uh, so really the what Dunning is Keurig. If, is it? Let uh, I me mean, pronounce it right. Dunning. Not Keurig. Kruger. <laughs> Kruger. That's right. Dunning Kruger effect. Okay. I'm like, glad I could help there for just a minute. You, I got really confused with the cup Keurig. Of coffee or something. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So it's the Dunning Keurig effect. All no, right. All no, right. No, no, it's Dunning. <laughs> what is it? Dunning. All right. Are we going to have to look this up? Uh, Hold uh, on. Wait, we got Kruger, 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 I think. Dunning Kruger effect. Dunning yes, Kruger effect. That's where we're at. All and, right. Yeah, we could help. <clears throat> Right, and so we, we, we were talking about this. And yeah, this, what is this stuff anyway? Well, I mean, you, I you were know. telling me because I, I actually didn't know some of the backstory, but it was it's it's um it's based on a a guy who robbed a couple of banks, right? And he put um he put uh, lemon juice lemon juice on, on his face, face yeah. because he had uh, was 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 certain that this would do to his face what it does to um 
Um, invisible ink. Invisible ink. I'm going to help out. Yeah. There you go. Because, yeah, right, the invisible mm -hmm. ink. And the, as kids, you know, coming up, we had that. You, you did, could yeah. you'd write with it, and then you could. Yeah. You, know, so. you had a sad childhood. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> Don't think of it. Another topic for another day. That's but, right. <laughs> but, uh, so, <laughs> thanks actually, for reminding me. <laughs> as I decide, this <laughs> may not be job. something I should right, I should say, but this actually happened this morning. This happened okay. this morning. Okay. My son hasn't taken a shower in a while, and I got up this morning, and I, I smelled him, and I said, son, son you need a shower. Get the shower now. And I said, he said, what's wrong? I said, you smell. He said, he doesn't. And I literally said this to him. I said, if it were possible for a lemon to have diarrhea, that's what you smell like. <laughs> 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 but, that's funny, but he did. He wasn't. Now he said, "I don't," meaning that he did not smell himself. In this, <laughs> he did not. Right? So, and, but right, here's right. the other thing about this: I went to open his door to see if he was up, and I could right. smell him before I opened the door. Okay, through the door. All right, <laughs> and, that's, that's a sign. And I told him that's when I sign. opened the door. Two of our downstairs plants died. That's okay. how bad he smelled. <laughs> All right. But, yeah, this but is, he was unaware. I keep going back. Was, but yeah. He was. And he and hopefully my wife right now has coaxed him into the shower or, right, right. or something. Or, or there's something. a fire hose outside or something. something. We need, but, need some help. But th th this in some ways does, doesn't relate to the By the way, when topic. he sees this later, <laughs> in his, you know, this, might, this, if it goes on the web, it's there forever. So, <laughs> so maybe, as, maybe when he'll he's see an it. old man, he'll look back and he'll and see it. And it wasn't true. He did literally smell bad. But um, right. <laughs> so this uh, Dunning Keurig effect, no Dunning Kruger effect. I'm yes. gonna get this Keurig. No, thing I see. I, th I threw that at you early to try and, <laughs> and now to it's stuck in my stuck. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Well, about the, that. The, the, this thing. So so what's key to this, right, is this notion of certainty. Right. And and, and what it captures is the notion that folks who um, and I think one of the studies that sort of got into prominence had to do with um, what they were. They tested some undergraduates and they asked them like how good they were at grammar or were they good with math things like that right and the individuals who um were more certain of how good they were or how well they did on a task i think right. they gave them a test tended to actually do poorer right and they were able to sort of rate the degree at which they were off in terms of you know whereas folks who did well on the test uh, rated themselves slightly lower okay so, so the put let me see if i've got that the 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 people who did poorest on the test rated themselves higher. Right. And the ones who did fairly well mm. rated themselves a little lower. Right. And so so okay. there you know, so there, there literally is and so there's there there's a way in which um there is a certain assurance and certainty that um that get, and, and there was a related and we don't know we're not supposed to get political here, but there was a related right. uh, um study where they uh folks who watched uh, cable news networks, particularly Fox. Right. And often, Fox folks who watched a certain percentage of Fox a day, fairly significant, rated their knowledge on politics, um, uh, controversial things like evolution and evolution of biological stuff and all that sort of stuff. They tended to rate themselves really high on those. And guess what? They tended to be really, really missed. Uh, 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 their, their expertise was quite absent. Right, right. And they found that, you know, all cable news um, have generated some bias, but there was something about Fox News in particular mm -hmm. that sort of generated this effect. Right. And so we can see it in the political landscape, and we could even see, and um, again, we're not supposed to get political on this, but uh, there's some interesting studies by uh, Drew Weston out of Emory, and there have been a few others too, that there's something specific about, say, um, a conservative mindset that might lend itself if you're not careful. Both extremes can can fall prey to this. They can they can right. sort of be um, undone by their certainty. But because um, the conservative mindset is built to some degree on um, on certainty and a, um, a a less openness to new experience, because that's one of the things we see in okay. uh, when we're sort of we're looking at the psychological makeup of certain political stances. So right. an Open openness to, to compared to yeah. closed, right? Maybe, and so you literally see they tend to be a bit more. Um, um, they can be trapped by this if they're not careful. Right. Mm -hmm. So in, in a way, it's, it sounds like this uh, Dunning-Kruger effect um, uh, as a result of uh, hearing about this 
bank robber with the lemon started these studies, and you just mm. mentioned some of those where um, made some comparisons. It's almost across the board that we rate ourselves better on just about everything. Mm. I've heard the survey about the drivers. Everybody rates mm. themselves as above average driver when we we know that's well. Not if true, everybody right? was above average, then that would literally break <laughs> statistical law, right? So there's no, there's no. Uh, but, somebody's got to suck. But there, there's, um, I mean, this this is really a kind of a problem, though. Mm. If I don't know much information, but I'm certain I know all of this information, I mean, that sounds mm. like a problem. Well, it's interesting because any if this is pervasive, we then have to step back and ask ourselves. How is it adaptive? Because if it is if it is right. part of our um, our cognitive hardware, um, then then it it has to have some purpose. And my guess is is that um, and I haven't looked into this much, and there's, I'm sure there are people who've, who've explored this far more. But I would I, w- I would make the assumption that it that it probably has at least short term gain. Okay. That I mean I can imagine in some ways, and just in terms of um, um, sexual selection. You know, the peacock that really thinks it's the most handsome peacock right. is going to generate enough swagger to get by. Right. Maybe. Right. <laughs> Maybe. Right. And, uh, you know, the uh, if you are, um, if the lion is coming at you and you in your heart think you can take it, you might bluff just enough to convince the, the, the tiger that you are something that, that it shouldn't bite. Right. And so maybe it runs the other way. So okay. ma- maybe yeah. there yeah. are some survival elements to this. Okay, so might, in a way you're reframing that a little bit to say, hey, it might be positive, but it, but it is in, in a certain extent, uh, extent because it's uh, ego boosting. Mm-hmm. If I can convince myself I know all of this stuff and I'm really uh, well-versed on all of this, Maybe that might give me a little advantage when I go into unknown situations or other situations at sense of bluster, as you called it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's uh, it's interesting, but we all have that, mm-hmm. so it's uh, it's almost like it should be somewhere in the middle that we balance. Is uh, another way to put it is we can really objectively evaluate ourselves. Well, well there could be that that, it, that it's possible that um, one of the cures for this, or that if if it is something that all of us are guilty of to some degree. When we uh, move closer to the possibility of expertise, I know you were talking last time about that 10,000-hour 10, thing. Mm-hmm. Maybe if we move toward closer toward um, our area of expertise, maybe um, it uh, we, we have a propensity for having it less. Mm-hmm. So if, if you are um, truly assured through, um, through, through study and through practice then you are going to be um, probably able to rate yourself um, a little closer. In okay. fact, maybe uh, tend toward under appreciating right. your skills. I, I mean, that's a trend, <clears throat> isn't it? <throat> the people who are really expert <clears throat> at ideas uh, and their field, discipline, so forth, don't uh, evaluate themselves accurately, maybe even a little less then. <clears throat> Okay, that's kind of an interesting idea. But here, also, I think if we if we think about this from what we talked about um, uh, the last time or maybe the time before, um, this notion of the tyranny of automaticity and this notion of cognitive bias, because in some right. ways this is a subcategory of cognitive bias, and so it okay. um, there is there is something about um, not having to think. It, it, in right. some ways, this this um, this keeps us. From having to invest the energy and time, we are simply assured, and then we move forward. And that's an interesting thing. I think it, you know, it's um, not only does it scratch an itch and serve a purpose, but um, uh, it. Um, there's a character by the John Hodgman play. I don't know if you John know John Hodgman. He was he was on uh, Colbert and. The Daily Show. Oh a lot. yes, yes, the old comedian. Yeah. Okay, I've got he's, it. Yeah, he's yeah, the guy yeah. who would always yeah. say he's the smartest man in the world, or, <laughs> and he would often they would ask him he questions. He was the guy that did the uh, uh, PC commercial, the Mac. Yeah, PC he did. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I remember. And that, yeah. they would ask him a question, and he would sort of, you know, he would just begin to BS, and but he would be so assured, and he would have this this air of being, you know, he knows what he's talking about. When in fact he he didn't know what he was talking right. about. <laughs> and I think about he's sort of a wonderful example of this sort of like, you know. This, uh, this, um, but you can also think in terms of um, 
there's a concept by, I think I mentioned this guy before, Wilfred Bion. Okay. I talked about him. We sort of talked about it a time or two before. Sure. That Bion's notion is that we really, in our heart of hearts, we don't want to think. Thinking is difficult. It brings right. with it, um, um, you know, uh, our existential brothers and sisters talk about how there is a price to be paid for awareness. Right. Right. So it contradicts some of your beliefs. It's right. in conflict with there what is. you've been carrying around and so forth. Yeah. And, and, and so Bion has this notion of what he calls positive and negative K. And positive knowledge and negative knowledge. Okay. And he said there's a way in which we can know something, and by knowing it, we actually are even remain ignorant. Okay. And so in politics and religion and in certain, you know, um, one wonderful example is, and I don't know how much of these folks are just trolling, but the flat earth folks. Right. Yeah. Who literally believe. I mean, it's a growing group <laughs> for some reason. That I'm the world sure is flat. That. <laughs> and, but notice how that's a wonderful example of negative K, of your, your, you knowing that the earth is flat keeps you from being open to anything else. It's literally a, no, a it's a knowing something right. that literally keeps you from picking up any other knowledge. It cancels out everything right. else that might inform you. Yeah, okay, and it's and that. if you think about that from sort of a if if Beyond's equation is right, there's that there has to be a moment of catastrophe for a real thought. So you can almost imagine like the flat earther all the information is piling up, and there's a certain point at which the flat earther can no longer sort of keep it at bay. And then suddenly their their idea of the earth being flat gives way, and they're flooded with all these things they then have to make sense of. And right. that requires a thought. That requires them actually being able to think this thing and then do something with it. Now, uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm thinking that, okay, that's too much information for me. We say that a lot to people for some reason. But when Usually people, when, I, when I talk about, like, you know, my uh, <laughs> Tiny Tim. Okay, or, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 no, we're used to it around here. Here's, the, here's Or that, the, that new tattoo okay. I got. That is probably some okay. TMI, I'm just saying, yeah. No, there's no tattoo. All right, so what, what, I don't, I've forgotten what we were going to say. But, but, <laughs> but the idea of all that information, you suddenly have to juggle it, make sense out of it, and that's a lot of work. It's almost like uh, some of the things we're talking about here, that, those concepts. We're, we're lazy in our thinking. We don't want to have to do this, or as Bion may put it, the, the negative knowledge thing. But, and he also has this idea that's, that's rather interesting, the idea that, Real thoughts don't require a thinker. Okay. So it's that um, real thoughts are waiting for a vessel, and the best you can be is just open to, for the thoughts to arrive. And metaphorically, this is sort of interesting. It's just the idea that that the minute we actually um, are active in attempting to think, cognitive bias is already engaged. We're already sort of doomed and whatever is about to come into our head has been attenuated. It has been um, it has been snipped and cut. It is procrustean. It um, it is smaller than it would be. So the thoughts that just arrive without us thinking them are often the most powerful and closer to some capital T truth. Right. That's sort of a Buddhist notion too. But in therapy, like one of the things that um, if uh, if you're working with someone. And a thought or a feeling hits you out of the blue, it often says something about the situation and the, the relational context that you couldn't get from any sort of attempt to be able to, to, to think a thing. Uh, Bion calls these reverie states. Oh, okay. And it's like, uh, and, and these are when thoughts without a thinker arrive. They sort of just seem to show up. And you may can right. think of these sorts of things that have happened in your life where something just hits you. Or if you're working yes. with someone and suddenly this thought arrives, it doesn't right. seem to be something that you've had to piece together and that you've been gnawing on and then you finally built in, step back, ah, oh, there's the thought. It's wow. something that arrives unbidden. And there's something about thoughts like that that's, that are important. Mm -hmm. um, have, have, some, have some real <clears throat> meaning. I mean, I'm also thinking, um, and this thought just popped in too, that, that sometimes music um, will bring back a feeling. You hear mm -hmm. people talk about that. It puts you back in that place when mm -hmm. you hear that song and it kind of takes you back. A, the same kind of idea. A Rick Ocasek song. Yeah. Would be yeah, half very, a, very much. Be so. a, well, you know, we, 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 we saw a bit of jazz last night. Yes, we did. We saw some, um, was it Bank the Jazz Hounds? Was that what they, what they called? 
I didn't get the name, but no. <laughs> no, yeah, I walked in a little late. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Was, uh, they were uh, yeah. It was the first time I'd ever seen a jazz band set fire to their instruments. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really a thing that <laughs> you that normally see. Hendrix, uh, I also Pete thought, kind of I thing, think maybe. they sort of got it wrong. You're supposed to set fire to the instruments after you finish the set. Not really not, not in, when you're them. about to play them. Yes. Okay. That <laughs> really, <laughs> that really affected the, uh, the quality. That was unusual. <laughs> it was. It was affected the quality of the performance, I thought. But uh, still okay. I'm not yeah, saying yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. It's, it's fine. But um, but we were watching the Jazz Hounds. Let's call them the Jazz Hounds. Because okay, if go. I had a jazz band, it'd be the Jazz that. Hounds. Okay, yeah, I like it. And uh, I'd be the first jazz band with the most prominent instrument is washboard. No, <laughs> it's not going to work. Telling you. <laughs> it's not gonna, although maybe. I don't know. I'll, I'll take you should, I can play softly as a morning sunrise on, ja- on uh, a washboard. <laughs> it'll bring you to tears. I'm going to bring you to tears because I destroyed yeah, the song. Yeah, you're going to bring us to tears. <laughs> and I'm also, I, I may bring my laundry over for you to do <laughs> while says, we're doing that. So, you you uh, can accomplish uh, two tasks. <laughs> but we were watching the jazz last night. Think about it. Part of what happens in improvisation is the idea, right? right. That you're open to what's going on in the moment. Yeah. And, and it's a, a whole form of communication with the other mm-hmm. musicians and you're kind of mm-hmm. syncopated there. You, mm-hmm. You're in line with it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it makes and sense. And so, so if, if this... this um, um, Dunning-Kruger effect in some ways and other cognitive biases sort of uh, are defensive if they, uh, if, they, if they act as sort of a rigid, un- impermeable boundary that we operate from that, for, that generates a sense of safety. The sort of improvising, reverie states, thoughts about a thinker sort of stuff that Beyond proposes is an attempt to be able to, to be open to the things that are both both your internal and external world. And I think jazz, in a way, is a wonderful example of how to do both, right? At least good jazz, right. you know. Bad sure. jazz, maybe not so much. Okay, I'll leave that alone um, <laughs> in that comment because we could go down that road. You, you were thinking of a bad jazz. You were thinking of bad jazz. Well, uh, okay, <laughs> so you got me. But let me ask you this. So are we, uh, it seems like, and we don't like to talk about politics, but it seems like we are entrenched in the tribal truthiness. things yeah. and uh, truthiness there. But uh, are we moving more and more to this uh Dunning Kruger effect, where um, I, well, don't I don't know you, that much, but I'm thinking I know a well, lot. Well, I don't know if you read any Stephen Pinker. You like this Pinker guy? Yeah, heard of him. We talked yeah. about him a little bit here. Now. Well, you know, Pinker's idea is that actually things are getting better. Yeah. And that so that this isn't the case, you know, and it could be that our um, that um, our knowledge of it allows us to be aware of it in ways that make it seem worse. You know, but people often right. say, you know, political discourse is horrible. It's gotten worse than it's ever is. But sure. then you'll like pick up a newspaper from 1871 where, you know, um, the There's presidential a duel. <laughs> somebody just shot somebody. <laughs> yeah, and, and then with a, and yeah. then somebody's calling somebody's mommy, mama, ma- mother a whore. I mean, these are literally <laughs> things that happen. Right. Like, and you're like, ooh, it was rough back then. But, yeah. So I'm and not sure to what degree, you know. Okay. All but right. y- there is a... an interesting political thing because you know, I, 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 I'm on the left. I'm sick. I'm, I'm so far to the left that you know, I have a Stalin tattoo. Okay. I'm not gonna tell you where it is, uh, but I can make no, it dance. And there's no, t- there, there <laughs> and, is no uh, tattoo, but uh, that's a nice and they don't call me the Red Army for nothing. Oh. Oh, but <clears throat> man, that's way too far. All right. TMI. You were talking about TMI. <laughs> yeah, TMI. But um, um, folks on the left often have this way of sort of like you know our goal is just to get Trump out. That Trump is somehow an aberration. It's a sign that things are going horrible and bad. But if we want to really sort of be Beonian in this, in terms of being able to yeah. be open, then we have to be able to think if we're from the left. Obviously, if they're right, you wouldn't think this. But you would see Trump as a symptom, right. and the goal is not to simply get rid of a symptom. But to understand it and learn from it, and to be able to to maybe untie the knot that, that that brings it, but there's something the cure is also in the symptom, you know. It's like um, okay. um, if we go back, uh, the, someone has a, a stutter, for instance, and there are lots of reasons why people, folks might stutter. But if they if they did have an impediment, and if they came to therapy, and it became obvious that um, throughout the course of their life they had often been um, they'd had um, some uh, some trauma at the hands of, of of their father, and that they're now embedded in this stutter is both a fear of speaking, a fear of reprisal, and maybe even deeper, an attempt to be able to um, to bring these situations into the future and the present in the hope that there could be a different resolution. So you repeat in the hopes that this time it might be different. Right. And uh, so let's just say those are examples. If we simply want to get rid of the stutter, we may not be able to move to the things that could be useful embedded in it. Mm-hmm. And so we could treat Trump in that way. 
So we need to be able to think about how do we understand why he's here, what he means. Lots of people voted for him. Mm-hmm. I saw one poll, the guy has a 40% approval rating. Yeah. And that's actually pretty high considering this guy's a dumpster fire. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. We don't no, that's quite all right. I, you, can, you can say those kind of things. But, uh, I, I think it's you okay. Know, but, and, uh, you know, I mean, I'm like, woof. You know? Yeah. Why are so many people seeing it so differently mm-hmm. in that? So do you think it's this Dunning-Kruger effect? That it is just uh, people who think they know what's going on versus well, I think um, what's Trump may really be a wonderful example of, of someone who may often be guilty of that. He often says things boasting he his IQ and how good he is at certain things and history just doesn't seem to repeat or doesn't bear those out yeah it doesn't but you know again I, I I realize that I come from a biased perspective but I yeah. I think when history shakes this all out you know whew, this has not yeah. been a st- yeah, stellar uh, yeah. but yeah. but he's certainly assured of that but I also think that like um, like for instance a wonderful example is the evangelical support for Trump right and um, I mean, I, I could certainly see lots of ways of of supporting him for various reasons, but um, these are folks who have high moral standards. Sure, they value uh, prudence. They value so many things, and um, sexual morality. And, and Trump embodies none of those. <laughs> right. I mean, even if you squint, <laughs> you have to look very hard. We even you literally have him it. on. We have him on tape. We have him on tape saying things. Right. Don't repeat those. Yeah, yeah well, so we yes. Understand. Yeah, and, right. uh, they, they, I mean, and, and, and people fix that in the one where he talks about grabbing women's genitals. But we have him on tape also saying that, that um, uh, young women, he said young women, I believe, who have troubled sexual pasts are the best in bed. Oh, he he made a statement that like that. Heard. Okay, now, there, 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 there are more, more troubling me. things. Yeah. And... I think that the ability to be able to um, to not be shocked or um, by that to a degree that you you couldn't see yourself casting that vote right. doesn't happen. He is still overwhelmingly supported by evangelical Christians, and you know it, well, it doesn't it, make sense. I mean, you can't balance that uh, mm-hmm. in some way to try mm-hmm. to make sense of why someone. Uh, who who had these strong very strong beliefs are suddenly discarding them or not using them or not applying it to well, the Well, you, you could sort of if if we had uh, um um was his name Dunning or Kruger? Let's go. Uh, it, it was two, it was actually two, two guys, two, two guys, two guys. Yeah, yes. that's right. It was two guys. So if we had either Dunning or Kruger, let's say we had Dunning on the couch. He came to you for therapy. Okay. And he came to you therapy prior to the moment when he was about to douse his face. In, uh, in lemon, lemon juice. juice. Now, it's possible that there could be some cognitive deficit here. By Maybe the way, a, that was another guy that wasn't Dunning or Courier uh, that did that. They studied the case. With, really? The, with the <laughs> bank robber who did that. Yeah, okay, so... Just to clarify that. So uh, it wasn't Dunning or Kruger that did it? No, no, no. Okay, no, okay no, so... No, no. so I'm these, glad are two, these are two researchers who studied I'm, I'm, the guy. I'm, I'm, glad, okay. I'm glad you're here because this, this is important. <laughs> it's important. So right. let, let's, let, let's call him then um, um, Trumpy. <laughs> okay. Let's call we him Trump. but okay, okay. Let's, yeah. Let's say so we, we we get Trumpy before he's about to engage in this crime spree right. and with Robbing a bottle of and putting the <laughs> with a bottle of juice. lemon juice, which right. hope he didn't get in his eye because that's painful that's stuff. That's gotta hurt. Yeah, or you have any if he shaved and then put it on there because I'm gonna tell you that's really gonna be painful too. <laughs> it's gonna be like Home Alone, but you know, with the guy with the guy going <laughs> out of the bank too looked at the camera and smiled because he knew <laughs> that they was, would know. Yeah, he was that's very beautiful, devoted. So. It's possible that before he launched on this really not so good crime spree, that um, he could have had some cognitive deficit. Sure. You know, maybe maybe some 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 trauma, brain trauma of some sort, or some you know congenital de- condition that sure. may have limited his capacity. But assume right. he didn't. Okay. The go- we might want to think about what what would cause him to be trapped by such a ridiculous construct. And you know, this is where Freud would come in. Okay. For just like the parapraxis, just like, um, you know, as famous Freud says, there's no such thing as mistakes. So if this wasn't, quote, a mistake, what sort of internal conflict would generate this act? And I might wonder, like I want, might wonder if, if, if even at the most basic level, the fear and concern of being caught 
was high, and he defended against that fear and concern through the action of the lemon juice. And so if he were to come to me for therapy and he was saying, you know, I'm going to rob a and I got this lemon juice. Right. We could then begin to explore. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about um, first off why you want to rob the bank because that may give us a clue as to yeah. what what creates the symptom yes, of the lemon that's juice. Right. That's a basic. We might also begin to get him to sort of talk about you know well what do you think it's going to be like, and, and if he begins mm-hmm. to to um, touch on and own with the possibility of modulating his anxiety instead of regulating it through symptom. He might decide not to do this, or at least might right. decide a different way of doing it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it makes sense. And I, and but I'm kind of wondering about the lemon juice idea too. Mm. That he really believes, since it was uh, used in invisible ink, uh, mm. kind of child's uh, play there, that uh, it would it would not show his face. It would cover his face while he did this, and they couldn't find him. So there's a that's a that's a delusional to a certain extent, is it not? Well, here's the thing: because symptom itself, you know, um, not to get political, but in some ways, support for Trump from an evangelical basis is delusional. Right. I mean, it's not. It, I I could see if you said I'm going to support him because I don't like him, but he's going to further. He, this agenda, he, the agenda that, 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 that I that I'm yeah. okay right. makes okay. I understand that, but if 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 they say that he meets some standard of godliness, right? I mean, that's a little like the lemon juice. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, is. it really it is. is. Uh, so uh, the, this I, this idea of delusion is part of this stunning Kruger effect mm-hmm. as well. If you really believe you're so much more knowledgeable mm-hmm. than you really are, and, you have to stretch that out. And, and sort of a Freudian reading of this is it's it, a, a delusion is a way of 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 um, it's a story we tell ourselves to be able to deal with the things that we're feeling. So it right. it it is um it is a solution for internal for the conflict between what's inside us and what's going on outside of us. So it's a way of, you know, it um like I would imagine some evangelicals that um um their the basis for their religious investment may be far different than what they think and truly believe. Mm-hmm. That um, you know, that uh, there's a a guy by the name of Peter Rollins, I think it was Rollins who talked about this. Maybe it was our man Zizek. Okay. But that part of what can make someone invest in Trump is he gets to do the things that you secretly want to do. Okay. That that uh, Zizek even There's says. There's an admiration for right, some of this. Right, because he's okay. doing it. Yeah. That, that, you know, he gets to well, you grab get, you, women's you, genitals. But I would secretly like to, but I can't because uh, I feel retribution. Well, that, you yeah, know, yeah, and, and a sense of morality it. and ethics right. and some other stuff. But but it's interesting that they that this kind of get locked on that. And what the defense is, he's um, saying uh, what he believes, and he's um, does he always says something. He that, is a that rascal. He, he he is he is in plain sight doing the very things that I don't, that I secretly want to do, but my conflict over them won't allow me. So he is, right. you know. He is, you know. Yeah. Well, it, it's, I, I can't help but coming back to this idea that we don't evaluate ourselves very well. We do it poorly. Even per, well, people who I know, do. okay, <laughs> what? Let's be honest. I, I evaluate myself quite, okay. quite well. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm so, like, you know, I'm not. All right, I don't know. I, I, my thought was that we don't evaluate ourselves very well until now, evidently, <laughs> That's right. you. and. Um, <laughs> But what I, what I would say is that is an objective to try to figure out our goal to try to figure out um, how can we be accurate. Don't we want to be accurate in our mm-hmm. evaluations? I mean, we talked about sometimes if you overestimate your, well, but your here's skill, the thing. Maybe we it, don't. it may help you in some other way. Maybe term. we don't want to be accurate because if our know, existential, existential brothers and sisters are right, awareness brings with it a great deal of pain. Oh, okay. So may, may, yeah, maybe yeah, that's not that something, you know, sense. maybe if you were truly, uh, one of the themes in a lot of uh, Lovecraftian fiction is the idea that um, if we truly were awake and saw how things were, we would see how horrible and how insignificant we are and we'd be crushed by it. Ah, that there is a madness much. of knowledge. Right? That, so, uh, okay, that, so, that, so that, m- maybe it's Lovecraftian. Can I say Lovecraftian? You just did. I did, yeah. So if it's Lovecraftian, that sounds like... Um, you know, like uh, your um, your mac and cheese would be screaming at you. 
you know. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I just lost that. <laughs> but but the idea that uh, it's too much for us to handle, it's just too big a burden if we looked at an insignificance and so forth. So uh, we uh, have this boasting and we evaluate mm-hmm. ourselves uh, in a, in a, a f- better than we actually are. Mm-hmm. But, but shouldn't we be able to handle all of that? Here's uh, that my thought, because if I give it sort of my personal philosophy on this, and uh, is that, um, I mean, I think if we take the Lovecraftian stance or um, that um, awareness, if we were truly aware, we'd be crushed by what we know. I don't think that's actually how it works. I think that we have, um, we take small bites of the world. Okay. And uh, the, at the best, what we can do is we, as we move through the world, we take, early on, I think we're forced to take larger and larger bites, but even as we get older, and it generates the possibility of growth. We move closer and closer to who we are and what the world is, almost like an ascend, in an ascending helix. And there's a step forward, a step back, a step forward. And so there's this movement. So it's okay. not a matter of either you're aware and you're freaked out, right, or you're right, aware right, and you're yeah. enlightened. Or you're aware and you are, you know, crushed by the knowledge. No, but that, sense. and then embedded in that too is this notion that it's always a, a bit of a dialectic, that the truth is always, to some degree, requires our fictions, and that it requires our biases, mm-hmm. and that we could even say that maybe part of this stunning um, um, Kruger effect, maybe it's it would be a lousy place to be stuck in, but it's one of the steps we need to move forward, and that we're catching sort of the mind. In a, in a in a in a in a moment, without thinking about what's about to happen next, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. It is it is a necessary component in our movement forward. All of these biases, they serve a purpose. If we were stuck there, we'd be in trouble. But they serve a purpose as we move and we get to know more and more. I, I think I've said before that you know I have a pre-adolescent son. I'm not just growing a pre-adolescent son. He's growing the father of pre-adolescent son. Mm-hmm. Our capacity in this dialectic to be moved, to move the world and be moved by it and to be able to, to find a way to dance forward. And I think all these biases we talk about, they serve a purpose in that dance. That you know, And uh, this is a, I think I mentioned this guy Lacan before. Yeah. Truth is structured like a fiction. Fictions are necessary. They are they are part of what we need to be able to bind and dance with the things we have to dance with. But what's often asked of us is to get we have to get better and better fictions. Mm. Okay, so it's a, it, it's a, it's some kind of balance to keep us from mm. being overloaded with this information, also being in the moment and not kind of uh, moving too far out. But but it does seem that people who overrate themselves in driving and all of these other th- mm-hmm. categories it seems to be across the board. By the way, that's why uh, I think it's that it may be part of that dance we have to do. That is, you know, that there has to be a that um, fiction is necessary. If you ask the person they're a better driver, well, probably that's part of the way they can get on the road. Because if you really thought about all the things that could go wrong, right, <laughs> you might. Uh, might not get yeah, the car. I'm thinking of First Avenue in the parking place is right out here. It can go <laughs> very wrong down there. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. That road. That's, that's, that, that's for sure. So, what about the people who really are experts? Like you know, myself. Talked, to, uh, talked about Sean. For Sean, that, guy. I, that was my example coming up it's, with it's uh, like, Dr. Cruzan. Um, I mean, they're underestimating their knowledge and expertise. I, I've talked to him. That? I don't think he underestimates himself. That's not what I'm <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, once again, not true. <laughs> and uh, Sean will talk to me about that. But okay, there we go. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that's a tendency. And, and that's what the Dunning-Kruger uh, found in some of those experiments, mm-hmm. that uh, the, the people who did very well had the expertise. Well, we'll think about it just in, in our profession, slower. the idea that... Um, a good therapist, and there's some interesting uh, uh, out when some of the outcome studies when they do the master therapist. One of the one of the major factors in 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 defining what a master therapist is is um, um, humility. Okay. It literally is. I, like it. I mean, and I was uh, um, um, uh, supervising a. Someone and they were they were they brought a tape in where this individual had just had um, someone very close to them pass away and die, mm-hmm. and um, the uh, the intern and I talked about this that um, if you come from a place of humility, then the grief they bring into the room is something both of you are awed by. 
you're not you don't suddenly move to a place of certainty I'm going to fix this and if you did that that would really wreck the possibility of moving forward with it so I think that you know expertise generates just the right amount of humility to be able to stay in the room but not take up too much space in it so in therapy I think that uh, and when I think of you know you supervised a lot of folk too part of you know new therapists believe they're supposed to be experts right they'll they're supposed to know what they're supposed to do okay and part of what happens right is you realize no 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 you realize you don't have a clue <laughs> but that's okay yeah it's okay <laughs> not to know <clears throat> right that's a, that's a life lesson there for all of us i guess in, and it may be way. that you may have to wait you know 10 minutes into the session before you have a clue or maybe a couple of months. <laughs> it's not, it you know. Yes. And you may know for a while and then suddenly not know. You may know and not know in the span of five minutes. And okay. you're okay. right, your capacity to be able to move through that and to be, but, you know. And I think that with some patients, they can, they can, they can help to rob us of our humility and our anxiety. We can move to a place of... Of uh, of thinking we know more than we do, and, and th I think those moments are often co-created too. Okay, you know, all right. They'll often uh, they they will come into the room expecting an expert, and their potential disappointment, their potential whatever, right. will move right. you at least unconscious unconsciously into the place of the what Lacan calls the subject supposed to know. Okay, <clears throat> and okay. you're both undone by that. Right, and and maybe that's how that. Uh, therapeutic relationship is built uh, that uh, we come to that place of uh, not mm -hmm. knowing and by the way what uh, what's wrong with that question it seems to me that when some when somebody I thought I think is an expert and they get to a point they are freely they're freely saying it I don't know it comes yeah. it comes naturally and it sounds like kicked my butt I like the idea that okay it's a certain honesty that mm -hmm. comes with that mm -hmm. So if you ever used, said that, that's, uh, that was Only that's on my, my wedding night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I, I should know better. Um, no, no, but no, I no, haven't no. learned. Uh, there are some things I just have not <laughs> learned around here. No, no. I, I think that, you know, like part of, um, I mean, in a good therapeutic relationship, I was talking with, a, with one of the interns about this, that I like to imagine sort of a, a, a garbage can in the middle of the room and that the, the patient is free to throw anything I say away. Okay. And I'm not going to, you know. Right. I mean, it's, it may hurt my feelings, but I'm not so wedded to it that I'm going to suddenly run out of the room. Right. So the capacity to be wrong. But yes. there are certain, like, um, I, I have a patient with a, with a strong OCPD character structure, and this individual, they, um, they can really annoy me by how often I'm wrong. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and like it's it's very important for them to be in control and in charge and in that space. Yeah, no, it, and yeah, it, and yeah. suddenly well, you find tough. yourself like you know. So everything you say is canceled out to a certain like, extent. Oh, man, it's like, oh come on, now, what's going on here? But the idea to be able to say, okay, well, what's going on here? You know, I, I can be an idiot sometimes, but right. I can't. Be, I mean, even a broken <laughs> clock. Occasionally, right? Well, That's even right. a broken I, clock. I figured where you is right might twice. Be right. <laughs> <laughs> and so either either statistically I've suddenly hit this jackpot where I'm 100% wrong which shouldn't happen. <laughs> it shouldn't happen as much <laughs> yeah. maybe. And as then you can say wait a minute so what is this and then you begin to think about it. So what is it between the two of us yeah. that generates this I'm always it's, wrong. It's indicative of another right. issue mm -hmm. to, to kind of deal with. But saying I don't know what it's kind of refreshing because if everybody mm -hmm. All right, let me let me just stop there but the idea of this overestimating and overrating yourself um, too much. So I guess it moves to sort of becoming a part of your personality, and it may move you along the continuum from the m mild or s slight delusion mm -hmm. to narcissism mm -hmm. of but, some things which we've talked about. But here. even the narcissist or individual who's delusioned, both of them are attempting to, quote, make the best of a bad job. And all of our defenses, no matter how, do you, how, how primitive, no matter how many of our fictional constructions, they still have the potential to move us forward in a healthy way, too. Okay. They are the best we can do in a situation like that. So yeah. um, I still think that there's something about these biases that, like all defenses, they can serve 
you know, it, it's a good place maybe to start from, but a lousy place to be stuck in. Okay. So, you know. All right. Well, um, that's, <clears throat> this has been really interesting because this, this uh, Dunning-Kruger effect m is pervasive uh, to a certain mm -hmm. extent. that um, it, it affects us all in, in, in various ways. And I think sometimes when you f hear someone who's an expert or thinks they're an expert and with very little you know, information. Are you looking at me? Uh, no, <laughs> I am, but uh, that wasn't my point. That that basically it turns us off to those people. We also want to say, hey, wait, you don't know as much as you know, and it's that's uh, either it turns us off, or forty percent of the country suddenly are turned on. You got to be kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's I it. That's are, it. Right. So it, yeah, a, but it, in, in, in a way, it kind of explains the factions. It, it puts you in a, in the camps in the tribal mm -hmm. uh, idea there. So. Uh, that's interesting. Anything? Any advice for uh, Elizabeth Warren, in 2020? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Not going to be uh, political, but here we yeah, are. Yeah, there we go. Here. We just said that. Uh, like Yang, he's going to give me some free money. So uh, <laughs> yeah, just anybody, if I can get some free money, <laughs> that free that's money's cool. good. The, uh, but, but that that's that's been uh, this has been an interesting discussion. I, I think we need to maybe we'll come back and touch on it as we go forward because it's so it it, it is really important and. And, and for me, I think um, in, in doing the research I had for my degrees and some other things, you come across a lot of uh, information that uh, uh, you'd rely on experts, but science gives you a chance to uh, kind of see what it is now, but maybe future experiments may uh, refute those findings, and there's always a growing and a moving uh, process to learn uh, more and more. All right, so man, we covered we covered it's a lot good. of territory here, but uh, no, no, I don't know. There's so, still some questions unanswered. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll we, we will back. certainly answer them next time. I'm certain of it. Okay, you just contradicted <laughs> what you said before. If I'm so certain about things, but by the way, I mean that's hard. That's difficult in therapy. You were saying earlier that if I come in as your client, I'm the, I know exactly what it is, and you know mm -hmm. that it's not. Mm -hmm. We have to find some middle ground to keep that conversation going. Mm -hmm. All right, my friend. Thank you uh, for today. Uh, I guess we'll end there, and I'll see you next time.